Oh, you did. I think I did. Okay. Like try to bite me, jump Fight. on me and bite me. But he's not sending you. Yeah. No. Hey everybody, this is Sean with Good Dog. And we're just bringing back Tank. Uh, he's going to be doing a two week board and train with us. Um, we just just grabbed him and um, you know he had he's got a lot of bratty stuff going on uh, some inappropriate behavior with the uh, other dog as well as targeting other dogs in the neighborhood he can't be walked um, apparently he's just a disaster uh, even with a prong collar on he won't tolerate a prong collar flipped crocodile rolls I haven't seen it yet myself this is just what I was told by the owner today um, she can't walk him at all she's got him on the treadmill but she can't walk him period because his behavior is so bad so knuckleheady so I anticipate we'll get some action from this guy so um, we just kind of put him right in the car I mean there's a little bit of footage of us taking him out of the house and definitely gave me some stuff you know jumping up just like some scratching and stuff like that but disagreeing with being controlled so we're gonna start his uh, initial progress or process right here So this is all the stuff that the owner talked about. This is what we call bratty hijinks. So what he's hoping is, by throwing this whole conniption fit, that whoever's holding the leash will stop doing whatever they're doing, will let him regain control and do whatever he wants. And it's worked really well for him in the past. He does enough of this stuff and people just stop and let him get away with it. Excuse me. But I'm not going to stop. I'm going to keep working with him so he's going to learn that this stuff doesn't fly and then we'll just see this stuff recede and recede. Uh, so we're just going to help him work through this because that's what's going to give them access to having a really good dog that they enjoy rather than somebody who's kind of making their life challenging. So what you see me do is I'm giving him little leash pops for disregarding, basically just asking him to slow down and pay a little attention. And then when he starts to rear up and do his thing, I just put a little tension on the leash. Put a little tension on the leash. And I hold him out, not so much because I'm worried about him biting me. I don't really think that's his gig. I mean, he's definitely gonna scratch me up a little bit, so it's, it's a more safe kind of way to deal with him. But mainly what I'm doing is I'm putting pressure so there's actually a consequence built in for when he's doing this stuff, spinning around, acting like a knucklehead. So he's getting all this pressure, and it's, and, which is a consequence. And as soon as he relaxes and stops acting like a knucklehead, that pressure or consequence goes away. And so he learns, every time I act like this, it gets uncomfortable. And every time I relax, it gets comfortable. Okay, so he starts to put two and two together, and he starts to come up with different choices about it. So I got a choice here. I can go really firm on him, or I can just ride it out and have a more subtle conversation with him, which is what I'm going to do. So, pressure, 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 he relaxes, I relax. Now, any time while he was doing all this stuff, I could have, I could have really nailed him with it, but a lot of dogs, it's just going to ramp him up, and it's just going to make things worse. So, I'm still having a firm conversation with him, but I'm doing it without the fireworks. Yeah. So we want all this stuff. Basically, we want him to work through all this stuff. He's got to get it all out. It's like a, like an exorcism. Got to get it all out. Got some evil stuff in him. Some naughty adolescent evil stuff. So 
Once again, this is stuff that we see all the time, and in, in my world, this is mild, easy breezy stuff. Um, super normal, natural behavior for a dog that hasn't been given enough structure, rules, or leadership absolutely makes sense. Uh, this stuff's going to be gone in a day or so. And then we'll just be patterning it from there on out. On that. angry at him, I'm not pissed off, I'm not really even, I'm not challenged by him. I just see what he needs. I see he's a guy at this high level of brattiness who just doesn't take anybody serious and, and needs to learn that component of relationship so he can transition into a good space. So like I said, this is probably a, a one half day kind of thing, but uh, I'm, I'm okay with having this conversation with him in order to have him transfer out of that and be a good dog and be in a good space. It's a lot of work acting like a knucklehead, isn't it? So you're already seeing in just a few minutes here, you're seeing him get into a different mode. Once again, he's never been, he's never actually dealt with somebody that's known how to control him, influence him, and share the right conversation with him that he could actually give a little respect to and let go of all this monkey business. So in a few minutes time, you're actually seeing him give up that stuff and give me a whole different state of mind right before your eyes as we're working this. Excuse me, really simple stuff, but it's powerful stuff. Okay? So here's a dog that's been deemed unlockable, even on a prong collar or anything else, walking like a total gentleman. Brattiness is receding already. We're not even doing like a massive walk, it's just a short little thing under the shade tree. But look where he's walking with. I know he's got some excitement issues with other dogs, so I'm sure if you see other dogs, he'll ramp up a bit. But this is the beginning of creating a new thing. Asking for a little focus on the turns. So, once again, this is one of the initial parts of the relationship before I bring this dog inside, introduce him to other dogs in my place. He needs to be in a mode where he's actually respectful and listening. He's, the last thing I want to do is bring a state of mind like that into my place and have all the other dogs see that he's out of control and then the other dogs want to try and control him. That's a recipe for disaster. So he's not going anywhere near my place until he's in a different gear, different state of mind, which is now what he's in. He's in a way different state of mind than he was when we took him out of the car. So now he's a dog I can start to bring in around other dogs and, and have them feel comfortable with his presence rather than them wanting to correct him because I'm not doing it. So that's the number one way people have dog fights in their houses by bringing dogs in and having other dogs perceive a lack of control and that they've got to go take matters in their own hands. So, all right, so we're gonna take him up to, up to the house, bring him inside and uh, check him out. Got um, Tank walking with Laura and Buckley, and he has got a few dogs around. But I just want you to watch Tank, who, if you saw his initial video, you saw what kind of walking stuff he had going on. So this is two days in to his uh, rehab with us, and we've got a beautiful, nice heel going on. And uh, even though we saw lots of fireworks, all that stuff is uh, it's gone now. So awesome stuff and uh, we'll keep you posted on Tank's progress. But uh, two days ain't bad to have a nice walk like this, right?